Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome to the workshop. Today I'm recovering my equipment after a particularly damp, wet and sandy fishing session the other day on Southbourne Beach. I've got to do all my equipment recovery, look after my reels, um, wipe my rods down, make sure everything's clean, tidy, put away dry so it doesn't trash itself. And I've got to prep some bait. I've got to prep some bait which means defrosting it but I've got to keep an eye on it because I don't want to defrost it too much because then it becomes too difficult to work it becomes too soft and it starts falling apart so recovery of equipment prepping of bait and I'm going to light the fire the log burner behind me because it's quite cold um, it's late December, almost New Year I'd like to go fishing tonight I've got no plans for anything Mrs W doesn't want me to do anything and I've got bait in the freezer so if I pull my finger out and get on with it, a bit of fishing tonight's on the cards. If you've been watching my videos, I hope you enjoyed the Southbourne video with both Ben and Richard catching small-eyed rays and Richard catching that turbot. Amazing. I absolutely chuffed the bits for him. Turbot and a ray on the same night from Southbourne Beach. The beach that delivers. But not for me. They were both catching, I was just fishing didn't catch, well, I saved the blank with a ting. I saved the blank with a ting, and all my kit got trashed. So, without further ado, here we go. If you want to sit back, relax, and watch me work and beaver away, that's what's on. I need to get on and get stuff done. First things first, I'm going to light the fire. Those of you wondering, well, why is he putting white spirits on, on a piece of wood? Well, I'm not out in the wild. I'm not out in the wild. This isn't um, bush camping or survivaling or, or any of those things. I am in my workshop and I want to light my stove as soon as possible, really. And the quickest and easiest way is a very slow acting accelerant light white spirits as you can see she's away straight away the one thing you have to be a little bit mindful of is that you generate enough heat to make it self-sustaining split wood burns better than solid wood Split wood burns better than solid wood and for the chimney to work properly on this you've got to get it up to temperature. If you don't get it up to temperature and you don't get the drawing effect it just swirls around and it will cough the smoke out the front of the stove. And this little log burner is so efficient that it acts more like an incinerator. If I leave the door open it will just burn through wood in no time and you don't get the benefit. So once I've got this going, it's heated up nicely. I'll close the door and throttle it down. Wait now, go for now. I'm waiting for that to warm up, warm the workshop up. Next thing to do is prep some bait. Off to the freezer. Now I've got some mackerel, quite a lot of mackerel. I need to split that up. And garfish. Got lots of garfish. I need to back break that down a little bit as well. I don't know if you can hear in the background but the log burner is going 10 to the dozen. It's burning up. It sounds like a steam train. Right, I'm not going to be able to split that. I need an angry tool. What can I use? What can I use? <laughs> Splitting bit. Splitting bait. That works a treat. Two garfish, two garfish, and I think two mackerel, two mackerel as well. We'll uh, cover another session. Two garfish, two mackerel, 
and some sand deal and squid. Plenty, plenty, plenty. Plenty of stuff. Frozen freezer bags. Don't untie when you've tied them up in knots. One big solid frozen lump of mackerel. Only want a couple of these. One quick tap with the axe and they're separated. Two people, two garfish. Tronix Pro fishing bucket. Christmas present from Mrs. W. The beauty of that is the top part is a bait tray and then the bottom part is your bucket. So I've got my bait in the top of there. I'm thinking if I put some water, hot water, in the lower part of the bucket, put the lid on, it should help to defrost that, but defrost it gently. I don't want to put it too close to the log burner. I don't want to damage my bucket. Boil some water up to defrost some bait. Next up on my list of jobs to do really is um, sort my rods and reels out. So rods first, I've already let them air dry. Um, it was a soft brush because it was sand. Um, try to make sure that I brush them off upside down and I'm quite happy to stand this on the floor because there's a bit of carpet down here and it doesn't damage the ferrules or the, or the ends. Sort of give them a little bit of attention, check everything out, especially round, round the eyes, just to make sure that nothing accumulates, no sand builds up anywhere in any of the joints. Make sure the transition is clean. That's the one thing I've got to consider that when I oil these up in a minute, that I don't get anything on there. I don't want to cast out a six ounce weight and send the end of my rod out to sea. That would be a disaster, and I have nearly done that before. Where the, where the line has jumped, wrapped an eye, gripped it, and taken the rod tip off. Taken the rod tip off, but luckily I didn't break off. And because I didn't break off, I managed to reel everything back in. The rig, the rod tip, and that was down one time down on Chesil Beach. Going for that extra bit of distance, giving it a bit of heave ho, I nearly lost the end of my rod. That's nice and lightly brushed down. This one for some reason has got a bit more sand on it. Pay particular attention as well to the reel seats because sand acts like a like a grinding paste. It's very abrasive. And what you don't want is the action of you tightening up your reel seat, tightening and loosening that. It's scoring and cutting. Nice little brush down. I find once it's dried, the best thing to get sand off is a light brush. If you wet it again or run a cloth over it, what you tend to do is you pick the grains of sand up in the cloth and then you really scratch everything and it really does give everything quite a battering. So I prefer to let it completely dry out Depending on how you maintain your kit, whether once all the sand is definitely off, whether you then wash them, wash them in soapy water. If I've been using particularly messy bait, or other circumstances like that, where you may contaminate your rods with all, all manner of weird and wonderful things, um, peeler crab's a good one for that. Once you get peeler crab everywhere, it's really, it gets it absolutely everywhere and it gets really sticky. Um, but yeah, if you get to use a bait or circumstances, then obviously I do like to wash these down in soapy water. But the routine I've been using now 
with what I'm about to show you in a second. You don't have to wash them every time because it's sort of like a, I wouldn't say it's a film because you can't feel it, but it definitely leaves something behind on the rod. Um, okay, so this isn't designed for fishing rods, but it is easy to use corrosion inhibitor, reduces the effects of salt, leaves no sticky residue, makes cleaning easier, pretty much what I just said. You can use it daily and it's for the serious biker. I'm a serious biker, I've got two motorbikes. Um, it is FS365. I'm not sponsored, I bought this myself, but this is what I use. And I thought it's worth showing you. Clean, dry, um, microfiber cloth. You get these for penny. These used to cost a lot of money. And now you can get them from supermarkets like 99p for a packet of four or whatever it is. I've got loads of them. Um, I've wet that to the point where it's soaking wet. And just being careful where I do put it. I don't want it on the um, handles. But I'm leaving it as a wet. So that it's literally, I'm wetting the rod. This isn't laid down by anyone. This is my routine. I don't know, I've not seen anyone else discussing this. But the areas of the rod that might corrode, that look like they might need a little bit of attention, need an extra little special clean, that is now done and I set it to one side. It dries very quickly. Um, that's the butt section. I said butt. This is the first section. This is the one that I tend to spend more time on because it's got the first large eyes and I literally clean every aspect of the rod eye in between, in inside, all around it, all the rod section. Especially this first one, because I think this first one is the one that takes the hit when you're casting. Make sure it's nice and clean, there's no dry, stuck on fishing bait residue or anything like that. Work my way all the way down to the bottom and I do not touch do not put anything on the transition piece. Very important, very important. And on mine, just above the transition piece, is a grip section. Don't put anything on that either. So make sure that the eyes have got no bait residue, nothing else on them, that the rod's been nicely wetted, and set that aside to dry. It also leaves like a, I want to say gloss finish, but the end eye as well. This is the one where you can get a little bit of dried seaweed, pick something up on one of your casts or your retrieves. Um, I've got this reflective tape that's spiral wound, so I just run it in the spiral to make sure that everything, I pay quite a lot of attention because your, your end tip as well gets a bit of a hammering to be honest and show it some love. all the others all the way down the spiral winding and then when the eyes get a little bit bigger you can pinch your fingers together trap the eye between it and just get it in there all the way down make sure they're all nice clean smooth and again I've got that same thing again I've got a transition piece where it joins and I've got a grip section but don't put anything on that anything at all even though it's not a slippery residue left on it. It leaves a residue nonetheless. I'm trying not to clatter my rod around my roof of the workshop. My man cave. And there it is. And with this rod, these are the Extreme Blacks from Shakespeare. Not an expensive rod. They've got a very fine section tip as well. Now I haven't used this for a while, but I'm here having a quick look and when I did use these last there's a little bit of dry stuff stuck on the end so I didn't clean these properly last time I went flounder bashing but I've done it now all the way down make sure each eye gets a little bit of love and attention and 
and that is that rod complete. Just looking at the first butt section that I did, that looks pretty much dry already. Right, so I do believe in looking after my equipment. Spend a little to save a lot long term. So I'm using real cases. Real cases and my body of my reel inside. Just sort myself out. Okay. Yep, so there's grains of sand everywhere. So very carefully, just to make sure it doesn't fall anywhere where it shouldn't. Just give it a quick little light going over with the tickling stick. Get all those little grains of sand out from where they shouldn't be. Just pay particular attention, especially on the area where the where the clutch drag is set. You don't get any grains of sand in there because that would be catastrophic. I think that would have a very negative effect on everything. No. no grains of sand and as promised earlier I used to cut the squirts for the for the rods cut the squirts for the reels and all I do is I go over all of the reel pay particular attention to the bail arm and where the line seats in that area there make sure that's completely clean got no residue in there and the bail arm itself real body all around now you're probably thinking why don't I just spray the reel let it stand or let it stand or wipe it over there's no need there's no need and this stuff goes a long way goes a long way and for no cost at all so I have found one negative one negative out of what have turned out to be amazing reels. And it's not really a negative, but I'm being picky. And that is, I'm going to show you because I've done it. Whilst wiping these reels over now, I've dislodged the spray bar. There's like a, a like a windscreen wiper, for want of a better word. And there's one either side. And they're really easy to dislodge. I'm going to make sure my fingers aren't greasy. I'm going to take it off in its entirety. It's got a little nodule on the end. And all you need to do is feed it back into its slot and then reseat that little nodule. So even though I just dislodged it, I've now replaced it. And if you dislodge that whilst the spool was on, the easiest way to put that back in is to take the spool off, reseat it, put the spool back on. And I think all that does is reduce the amount of salt water spray because the retrieve rate is so fast on these, they can actually throw up a lot of water from the line as it's recovering. I think that's what it's for. I'm no expert. So the bail arm and all the other bits and pieces the winding arm, put nothing on the handle, no need, it's not metal, it's got no protective finish, it's plastic. Put nothing on that part there, because there's no need to. Just giving it all a good going over. So that is that reel, done. Really like the action of these. The way that it lo loads the line and how parallel that all is, is pretty amazing. It's good stuff. We like these reels. Okay, so I'm just gonna sit that aside just for a minute, just to air dry off a little bit. Another reel bag, matching identical reels. I do like, I do like, that's OCD in it. I do like that, where your stuff's the same. It messes with my head if you've got two different reels, two different rods different tackle. I can't help it. I've, I've obviously got some form of OCD or something. And just the same again, just with the wet cloth, just go over my reel. This one didn't have any sand on it. This wasn't the one that I dropped. <laughs> I dropped
put the other one obviously because that one was covered in sand. I was gutted when I dropped that. I was packing up, I had all the camera equipment, I had this, that and the other. I was juggling all sorts of things. And I dropped my reel on a sandy beach. I wasn't happy. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all had those moments. The tenor lady moments. Oops. <laughs> Anyone that doesn't understand that joke, just look up Tenor Lady, the advert. It's quite funny. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the lady keeps wetting herself and all she says is whoops or oops. The bail arm, a bit of attention to the bail arm. That's going to come into contact with the line. There you have it. One reel that's been shown a little bit of love. And it's taken minutes and pennies worth of that stuff. It really is. It costs next to nothing. So while I've got my cloth out, in fact, no, I was about to say, I'm gonna go over my bait needles, my fillet and knife, and my bait scissors, but it's pointless because I'm gonna be prepping some bait soon. So that is gonna stay out ready to do those in a bit and then what else to do okay so I need to reassemble my reels in a minute put the spools back on put them all back in their bags tidy them away so that's another job I need to put some wood on the log burner because I can hear the noise that's starting to quieten down a bit and need to prep some bait so both reels have been showing a little bit of love been dusted off from sand and checked over and stripped down, checked that the grease is still as it should be on the drag mechanism. I've now reassembled them, um, just bag them up. They've been air dried, been lubricated. It's taken minutes really, and that's how I store it. So that's one reel. And the second reel, all bagged up. Both reels all bagged up, that's them safely stowed away. Probably worth mentioning that while I had all the stuff out, and because I haven't used them for a while, these are my Shimano's. So the Shimano reels was what I started off when I when I started back into beach casting or beach fishing if you like. Um, and I found the limitations on them quite quickly. So my brother and I went on a bit of a cod hunt down to Chesil Beach. And I did catch a cod in October on one of these reels. But the mono line had so much stretch in it when you were trying to give it some distance. And the reels actually felt stressed when you were giving it some distance. I'm not saying you can't use these. But these are more small beach estuary type reels. And they've got one particular habit and this isn't going to be an assassination, it's just something I noticed with both of these reels and I looked up on the internet and other people found it as well. And that's the automatic bail arm on these has a tendency, if you give it a big heave ho, to close on you. Which means you can either crack off or stress your rod, stress your reel, or stress your rig. And I had that happen to me on a couple of occasions. Even though very carefully, once you realised it was a problem, always set the bail arm very carefully you know, make sure that it was latched and it was correct and even then sometimes it would go on you. So the Shimano's, although a different size reel, different quality, different standard, with the automatic bail arm, wasn't too keen on them to be honest. The pens on the other hand have done away with the automatic bail arm. I haven't had one of those clothes on me yet. That is a stress or a worry that I'm really glad that I haven't got anymore. What next? What next? What next? Prepping some bait. That's the next one. Need to prep some bait. So I'm going to do some bait prep. So I've just roughed an edge on my knife. It's not brilliant, but it's better than where it was. And it does need a proper grind. You can see I've taken notches out of the blade, which I wasn't aware of. Nice flexible filleting knife. Good quality filleting knife. I've got a homemade baiting needle. There is a video 
for making baiting needles that will come up on the screen now if you'd like to know how to make those yourself. There's the Yuki small baiting needle, really good little bit of kit. My favourite, Innova baiting elastic, love that stuff, that is. And the dispenser and the elastic, really good stuff. And a decent set of bait scissors, must add bait scissors. So that's all my bits and pieces, need some bait. Nice chunk of garfish, very fleshy. Let's see what we got. Got to try and work out how I'm going to get the best bang from a buck of bait out of this. I suppose the obvious answer would be to fill it. Now. I am being careful because this is slippery as you like and it's part frozen and I wanted it part frozen to make it easier to work with. So I'm looking at what sort of size baits to make out of this and I'm thinking I'm going to split that in two. to make these into nice sized baits I think I'm going to top and tail that like so which is going to give a very nice shape and size I'm working this out as I go along, fighters, to be honest, and this will always be the difference, you know, depending on what size baits you got, what you've got available. <laughs> there's so many variables, I don't think there's any one way of doing anything. But as you can see there, I've topped and tailed two pieces of bait together. I'm going to start elasticating from the centre. I'm not putting it on a needle at the moment, I'm just seeing how it goes. And it's elasticating up nice, but I think I will put the next one on a needle just to get that structure. Because the needle helps to keep it straight, whereas in my hands, even though it's convenient, it wants to curl. And I'm interested in this, give this garfish another run out because I did quite well on garfish last time. And even now, there's quite a lot of juices coming out of this bait. I don't hear many people mentioning using garfish. I don't know if it's because it's harder to get hold of. And I am actually going to tie this one as opposed to just snapping it off. And that is my first bait prepped garfish, top and tailed. Give my hands a wipe. Get a bag prepped. I'm going to do bags of 10. Bags of 10 are quite convenient. You can gauge how much fishing you're going to use, how often do you think you're going to change your bait, um, and, and all the other bits that go into your planning. I'm a bit of a, a planning freak, to be honest. I like to plan things out. A lot of people like to wing it. Um, I genuinely really like to plan my my stuff out. I don't like any surprises. I deal with the surprises as they arrive, as always, and there's always going to be something. And concentrate mark because you put that on around the wrong way. And already this is part frozen, but already it's starting to get quite soft. So double baiting needle with the garfish topped and tailed. I'm going to go again from the centre. I lay the elastic on top of the bait and pinch it with my thumb to get myself started. And then the first pass you put tension on, depending on what kind of elastic you got on. And I've just managed to break that one, which is a good example of why you don't pull too hard. And it looks like there's a weak spot in this elastic. Okay, so wrapping around. 
and then because you haven't got a trace or anything on there and you're not hooking up at the moment you can actually just turn the baiting needle around and go the other direction as well which I find quite useful so I'm going quiet because I'm concentrating and coming back to the middle I am going to tie these off if you see my other videos I don't tend to usually I don't usually have a problem with elastic coming undone but I like to swap things up, I like to vary things, other people seem to think it's quite important so just giving it a quick go myself and tied off and then snapped off and that to me is a stunning looking bait that one that one is a fairly chunky monkey that one that's a good bait, I'm pleased with that one so two good garfish baits so far I'm going to follow form and just go for a middle cut which going through the backbone takes a bit of takes a bit of welly and I've got that to contend with now on this one so the way I cut the last one I didn't need to contend with the backbone so I'm just wondering if it will pull out or whether I've got to cut it out again I'm, f I'm finding my way through this as I'm doing it I think I'm going to have to cut that out. The fact that this is still semi-frozen is a help and a hindrance. This stuff is pretty difficult to keep hold of. Tearing it's not working. Concentrate Mark. Don't want to waste this bait. It was hard to come by. rubbish and this one because of the way it happened I might try something a little bit different with this one it's going to make a smaller bait as in diameter but I might try and roll this one see how this one goes so I don't know why anything went like this it looks good enough to eat myself to be honest garfish don't hear anyone talking about it. It's all looking a bit messy, but the elastic tidies it up. Let's see where we go with this one. See, straight away, I'm not feeling the love with this one. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? How you get a feeling for one and not for another, and. I like this, I don't like that, but hey ho, it's too good to waste, and this just might be the one that catches something significant, you never know do you, and then you think back on it, you think, I was in the workshop and that bait, I really didn't like the look of it, but that was the one that caught me the such and such, I don't know, so this is all, this bag, so that's three, I'm going to get four, I've got another huge garfish there to prep in a minute. So we're going to get a fair old bunch of baits out of these. And it's going to be interesting to see how it fishes. I've used it before, but I was fending off whiting when I was. And I did catch a lot of whiting on it. So there's another one. this doesn't all get too wet because obviously it will start dripping over the side soaking into my bench and my man cave will smell like a fishmonger's speaking of which I went to a local supermarket to do our Christmas shop with Mrs W the other day about a week ago I can't remember five six days ago and I had a quick look at the uh, at the fishmonger's stall there was nothing on that stall that was fresh it was all gipping. You could see it was all washed out, coloured out. None of it looked particularly impressive to me. Um, and I certainly wouldn't have bought any of it. It's just surprised me. I would have thought they'd have been battling for fresh, good quality stuff. I'm just trying the bait scissors now, guys, just to cut the spine out, because the spine makes it inflexible. And the bait scissors were better than using the bait knife. 
or the filleting knife. And what will actually happen there now is that rolls really nice. That rolls really nice and makes quite a chunky, chunky bait. I'm liking that. Every day's a school day. And give it all a good roll. That's quite a meaty bait, that. Anything that's going to take that is going to be impressive. Just hope it's not an impressive whiting. <laughs> hope it's a ray or a bull hus or a smooth hound or a nice big bass or anything other than being pestered by whiting all the time. But thankful for small mercies. I saved a blank the other night on a whiting. That would have been devastating. Everyone else catching around me, if I'd have caught nothing at all, save my blank with a whiting. That is my favourite one so far. That has absolutely come out tip top, ding dang do. Fire is going to need some wood on it in a minute. I can hear the change in the in the in the sound look at that that is a spectacular bait I'm really pleased with that one good job interesting to see the fruits of my labor so two four six eight ten ten baits from two is that ten large baits I reckon you could halve those if you wanted to um, yeah Ten large baits from two garfish, which, if you went down a hook size from what I intend fishing with, ten large baits all bagged up. I'll put those in the freezer. I've cleaned my kit. I've prepped my bait. I'm all set for another fishing session tonight. Looking forward to it. Exciting stuff. You never know what's going to happen. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you or spending time with you sometime soon. Tight lines and happy fishing.